Welcome, everybody, to the first film room on ITP Inside the Pylon. This is uh, Kyle Krabs. Today, I am joined by Inside the Pylon's resident SEC expert, a good friend of mine, a guy I've known for a year or two now, and, and he does really great work, and that's uh, Shane Alexander. Shane, what's going on, man? Oh, man, it's good to be teaming up with you under the umbrella of Inside the Pylon. I'm, I'm excited about today. Yeah, this is uh, this is fun. This is uh, not not where I'm used to being. So th- this fresh opportunity, you know, the, you guys were gracious enough to reach out and offer, and I'm gonna be greedy with that kind of stuff. You know, I'm gonna take advantage of any chance I get. Yeah, we've got some good things going, and to bring you into the fold to do this mini video series is uh, is just gonna open up to another demographic. I mean, these film rooms are very um, informational, and not a lot of the big outlets are doing them. And a lot of hungry football fans want these type of things. So I think this is going to be a, uh, a great thing going forward. Right on, man. And uh, speaking of hungry, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm hungry for some film. What about you? Let's do it. All right, man. I don't want to keep you waiting any longer. So uh, today we're showcasing Tennessee linebacker Jalen reeves Maben. Senior coming into the year, one of the players that I've looked at for uh, some of my work with NDT scouting. So... No, let's not wait any further. Let's just dig in. Let's uh, let's go to our first play. It's Tennessee versus Oklahoma, early season matchup, two ranked teams. Uh, Tennessee kind of let it get away from them here at the end. But um, this play, I think, is a really nice microcosm, a lot of strengths of Reese Maven. Tell me a little bit about what your first impression is watching this play. Versatility. This is what the NFL is going to as far as space players go, defensive linebacker position, and big safeties. Uh, so the first thing I know is you just – his versatility. He's out wide, coming down with Sterling Shepard, who one of the top rookie wide receivers in this class, is drafted by the Giants. Um, so just to see him be able to do that is an automatic check box, you know, checking the box for what the NFL is going to be looking for. Yeah, and, and through some of my work this summer, I've, I've had the chance to watch you know three or four Tennessee games. Uh, they get they get a lot of talent on that side of the ball. And he does this a lot. He he shows a lot of off the ball work on the second level. But if if a team will motion, he will consistently be one of the guys that bounces out and works outside the hashes. Which I think, as you said, the way the NFL is trending now it is really really big. And have a little love for this form tackle he throws on Shepard here in traffic too. I mean he shakes. To tight end and launches right into this aerial form tackle. It's impressive. It's bite the ball, wrap, grab cloth, drive the feet. I mean that that's pretty man. That's that's something else. And I like that uh, kind of going off of inside the pylons uh, glossary that they have for terms. This is that clicking close that you're looking for. You're looking for that quick process. Stick the foot in the ground and go get it, baby. You know I think about Shaq Thompson two years ago at Washington. They used him this way. Maven reminds me of him, but he looks to be functionally stronger um, on the field. All right, Shane. So we're, we're moving on from uh, the Oklahoma game, getting into SEC play now. So uh, Florida, this is another early season matchup, a game that Tennessee, again, kind of let them off the hook. But here we are, early first quarter. Um, what stands out to you about this five-yard loss? Patience and burst. When Greer puts the ball in Kelvin Taylor's stomach, he doesn't bite too hard one way or the other on the play action. He keeps his feet chopping. And then as soon as Greer pulls that ball out, he sheds a, a poor block attempt by Kelvin Taylor and then just wraps up Greer for the sack. So it's it's patience, football IQ, and burst. Yeah, and it, like you said, this this block attempt by Taylor is kind of lazy in that he doesn't move his feet. He just tries to kind of pick him off, off at the last second. But how about the burst when he decides it's time to go and shoot the gap? I mean, he covers a lot of ground there in a very short amount of time. I can just see a guy like Todd Bowles at the next level salivating over getting to coach JR. Yeah, and I mean, kind of going off of, of what we mentioned off the first video, um, this is a consistent thing with him is, is your – Seeing a player that now he's in a traditional linebacker role, working on the second level, and you see a lot of this out of him where he's very patient, his eyes are in the right place, you can see that kind of lane opens up when when the center blocks down and the guards in man-to-man. 
and that kind of alleyway opens up and he sits, 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 waits. He's reading to decide, am I plug and run or am I going to shoot the gap or is the back going out in the flats? And as soon as he sees Taylor kind of sit down, man, he makes that decision and he just shoots the gap. So many times on blitzing backers or edge players, we see that burst and then we see them hesitate once they get to the point of attack, the, the sack. He doesn't let up. Like There's a violent, uh, intelligent aggression about finishing the play, too, so you like that. It's beautiful, man. All right, Shane, a little bit later in this game versus Florida. Again, he's working on the second level. Tell me what you're seeing here. He doesn't finish the play, but I, I don't know about you, but I see a couple things that I really like here. Yeah, he does everything right to finish the play. In the last clip, I complimented him on finishing the play. This time, he's, he does everything right, but he doesn't. He picks the right lane. He's, he's hesitant enough to not get just washed out of the play. He waits for a hole to open up. He bursts through it, and he just uh, over-pursues a little bit, a little slop in his wrap-up. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is a, a quick toss to the short side of the field, and, and he's lined up uh, over top of the guard to the play side. And how quickly he's able to close here once the ball leaves Greer's hand. I mean, he's meeting the running back, Taylor, four yards deep in the backfield. Taylor doesn't even get a chance to square his shoulders. You know, it's that, that again, that click and close. He doesn't skip a beat. I mean, his first step is a lateral step to the play side, and then he's downhill. You know, I really like how quickly... The decisions there that, that go get this play. You mentioned him being patient. He doesn't run into the back of somebody, but he trusts that that lane's going to be there, and he gets a little bit of help from the defensive lineman to occupy the pulling player. But, I mean, he's he's to the sideline so freaking fast here. He covers nine yards in, in no time. He's at uh, the 39, and he gets right to the 30 uh, in about two seconds, and that's with, you know, uh, washing through all that mess coming his way. All he has to do is just be a little bit better at the at the tackle point and break down a little bit cleaner. But as far as burst and instant, I think, again, you see it for the third play in the row. Yeah, and this will be a little bit something of uh, a theme, I think, if you go back over Tennessee last year, is every once in a while he'll get a little overambitious with his tackle attempt. Like He, he doesn't have to leave his feet here. Uh, but but he, he's looking to, to drop a big hit, um, if he breaks down and really stays patient with it, that's really the only thing you can critique off of the first three plays we've seen so far. All right, Shane. So um, Tennessee ended up having themselves quietly a really nice season in the SEC. So we're going to check in on the bowl game against Northwestern. Uh, Tennessee 8-4 and four coming in, ended up winning the game. Very early on in the game, uh, traditional middle linebacker role. Um, what stands out here? I love that quarterback puts the ball in the running back's gut, and he doesn't over-pursue it. He lets that action take place. He keeps his uh, his head up, his feet moving, and when the ball is clearly not put in the running back's gut, then he, he makes the play going downhill on the quarterback. I think what really helps him transition here is you got both backside offensive linemen pull here. So he takes his one lateral step as the mesh point, you know, comes together with the quarterback putting the ball in the running back's gut. But as soon as he sees flat pulls flashing the other way, you can see how quickly he transitions, sticks his left foot in the ground, and ends up closing ground and makes this play for just a very short gain at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he lets the offensive lineman tell him where the play is going. Um, it doesn't get too... Um, uh, he doesn't get too over emotional about what he's seeing in the backfield of the running back. It's we've seen this what three times now. It, it's just he's got all the athleticism in the world, but the instincts are there. You can see it. Yeah, and from everything that I know about uh, Jalen, is he is a big film junkie. Uh, he's he's pretty active on social media, and he doesn't make it a secret when he when he's grinding on the film. So I think this is one of those plays that really pays dividends as being a student of the game. Because it'd be very easy, especially early on in the game, to kind of just flow here to the wide side of the field, assuming that they're going wide. But uh, a very physical tackle steps up, makes the play, trusts his his keys, and reads his keys. And finally, Shane, you know, as hard as it is for us to kind of put a player into five plays on the field, that's that's the uh, unenviable task we've been given here. So. 
uh, we do have to look at something of a, of a negative here. You know, second half, Tennessee's up about 18 points. Uh, inside run. Tell me, tell me first reaction here. He does the one thing he hasn't done in the other four plays, and that's guess it's wrong. Uh, as soon as the ball snapped, he's already going to where he thinks the ball's going to go. He gets attacked by you know, a lot of coming upfield, and, and everyone's guilty of it. There's no thing's a perfect prospect, but like you said, you have to point this out and uh, and, and hope that it gets corrected. And, and if he's such a film junkie like we think he is, and we've heard he is, we know he will, but. Yeah, he guesses here, and he gets uh, washed out of the play because of it. Yeah, and that is the, the one consistent knock that you're going to get with a player like this. It seems like all the uh, the highly athletic linebackers, uh, and you made the allusion to uh, Shaq Thompson a little earlier in the podcast here, these little bit of lighter guys that are able to cover so much ground, they don't have the same presence inside the box that, that your more traditional linebackers do, so... Reeves Maven, actually, he's in a position to make a play in that he stacked the block, and the, the, the ball carry is coming right off that blocker's hip. But he's got no length and, and not enough upper body strength to pop and disengage with his hands and, and try and fill that alley at the very last possible second. And that is going to wrap. Uh, Shane, I don't know how much you've watched of Reeves Maven outside of this, but um, what are some of your thoughts on him real quick? You know, you, you don't want to stick a round grade or, or guesstimation on him at this point, but you can just say, this guy's got a lot of talent. I watched a lot of Tennessee football last year. I watch a lot this year. They're projected to win a lot of games, maybe win the East. If they do, he'll be a big part of that on defense. And they're looking forward to an NFL prospect. We've seen guys like him go early, top 64. You know, if he puts some of these little you know, technique things together, gets stronger, more functional because he is a uh, maybe a – more athletic guy. He's got a chance. He's got a real chance to be, I think, a top 50 pick next draft. Yeah, no, it's it, it's hard to argue with that. You kind of echoed some of the sentiments that I had. I will say, based strictly off the film, he's one of the 10 best players that I've watched this summer. I, I love his game to death. It translates to the next level. Really excited to see what he's able to add to his res- resume in 2016. Uh, but with that in mind, we don't want to keep this running too long, so... Thank you guys for listening to the the first Inside the Pylon Film Room. I'm joined today by Shane Alexander. Uh, My name is Kyle Krabs. And until next time, thanks for listening, guys.